some sort of shape or form, hasn't he? Sometimes. Yeah, Jordan Blythe there, formerly of the University of Sunderland, with a look through the morning paper's headlines. Now, after Eat Out to Help Out, you may soon be asked to shop out to help out. Big names in fashion and retail are calling on the government to provide more support to small independent shops. They want the Chancellor to offer a scheme similar to the restaurant discounts we enjoyed last summer, which sees the government cover 50% of a shopper's costs, up to £10, on Mondays to Wednesdays for a month. It would only apply at physical stores with fewer than 10 staff. Supporters of the scheme include beauty entrepreneur Charlotte Tilbury, fashion designer Henry Holland and retail consultant Mary Portis. The Treasury hasn't commented on whether it would pursue the idea but said it had protected millions of retail jobs during the pandemic. I spoke earlier to retail expert Kate Hardcastle and I asked her what she thought of this proposal. Any independent organisation from the sectors that have been hugely hurt by the on-off lockdowns will tell you it is a case that any positivity forwarded their way, be it a reward scheme, uh, further awareness, extended opening hours, everything is going to be seen with open arms as, yes, please, we want to try and make it easier for ourselves to reopen and engage with the public. My concern slightly would be that a lot of these schemes and initiatives tend to be very much short term. They're very much about the here and now. And then the debate, the conversation, the work that needs to be done to get some balance back in our economy between the smaller and bigger businesses, particularly in places like high streets and hospitality, that really needs to be done. We need these vibrant high streets. We need local businesses to be supported. They add so much to us. So I absolutely applaud it, but say, I really hope there are other measures that are going to be out there to support smaller businesses in the long term. It's essentially a fiver off. and A, a fiver contribution comes from the government if the proposal uh, were to be taken up. It, will that be enough to get particularly small retailers back on their feet? It doesn't sound like a lot of money. You know, 100 shoppers a day, 500 quid, maybe it is. I don't know. I think, as I said, it's anything that you can do to stimulate, to provide conversation, to remind people those smaller businesses are there and help out to eat out did help. I think people do like to think that they're getting the best value. And I think certainly people might be interested and intrigued to find out more. Obviously, the scheme's not been approved. It's just a, a campaign to suggest something like that should be done. But I think there would be administration involved. These are small businesses that are reopening to try and engage with the public and try and get customers through the door in any way they can. And they've got to do Deal with all of that. They've got to make sure they get the claims back and that it would, the scheme would be as easy as possible for a business that's only just been able to reopen its doors again. I really believe it probably attracts the type of people that would already think about shopping at those businesses. And I think what these organisations need is a new breed of customer. They need additional customers to come back into the high street and support them, particularly when a lot of areas will probably lose for still some time a lot of the working population that might have boosted them on a lunch hour or after work with additional trade. On the whole, how tough do you think things are going to be for retailers post-pandemic? It's so tough. And yet retailers, when we describe it as an industry, we, we have to include, obviously, the huge surge online that we've seen. And we've had s significant growth in many of us being forced really to shop online if we wanted any non-essential goods. But those traditional bricks and mortar stores that do so much, that generate places to be, and really there is a community hub in each high street, have suffered. Smaller businesses work in a very different way to bigger businesses, obviously, but cash flow is really important to them. So as soon as they experience the first lockdown, it will have hurt significantly. And I think if you add into that, that it's so hard for smaller businesses to get a place on the high street, rents and rates can be really prohibitive. They can always be outbidded almost by bigger businesses that I think it's been difficult for people to generally get going in high streets that are busier for, for a long time, the smaller businesses, definitely. So we've got to make sure that there's a plan in place where we can not only have very human high streets, which are a good balance between not just retail, but 
hospitality, leisure, green spaces, residential, but that when we do have these hubs of retail, they are vibrant, they are smaller businesses, and we can kind of incubate those smaller businesses as well and make them easier for them to set up and to succeed. I'd, I'd absolutely love that a small business owner just has to worry about being a great business person every day rather than the spiraling costs of doing so that they've had to experience for the last 12 months. Well, I can't see a lot of businesses returning to the high street, to be frank, that have been closed up for a long time, and I'm sure you'll accept that. Uh, I wonder whether you have any sense of which businesses have perhaps done well over the pandemic and are likely to thrive come April the 12th, less than two weeks' time, when most of the stores will open again. It's been such an interesting time. Over the last 12 months, we've heard from high street giants like Marks and Spencers and John Lewis, who've told us that they've made closures, they've made job cuts on the high street. And John Lewis being very clear that, you know, a significant amount of their trade is now online and they don't even see much of that trade being driven by their stores anymore. And so I think there is that reality that when high streets do start to reopen, there are going to be spaces, there are going to be gaps more so than before. I think independent is a way of growth. I think there are a lot of people that are looking at starting their own business for many different reasons now. So I think that it is important that we embrace those areas. I think generally in terms of the, the landscape of the UK, we'll probably continue to see the buoyancy more in smaller towns and villages because it's close to where people are working from home and that the bigger areas are probably going to the bigger towns are probably going to struggle a little bit because they're going to have those shadows cast by bigger organisations. I mean, for me, retail has been just a fantastic thing to watch over the last 12 months. We've seen uplifting things like home gym, uh, DIY, furniture, everything that makes sense because we've spent time at home and tried to make these places into restaurants and cafes and schools uh, whilst we've had to do everything in one place. And we've seen a quite a drop off on things like fashion, just people haven't been going places and not wanting to replenish wardrobes. So it's going to be how the different sectors within retail start to emerge again and just how much of it will stay within that tipping point online versus coming back into the high street. I know for sure that the grassroots, the green stuff coming through has to be as much about independent businesses about than, than, than bigger businesses. So we've got to look after them. Yeah, DIY stores have done pretty well, I think, over this <laughs> pandemic. I don't see any way around that. They're, they're going to be on the high street for some time. What more is needed, though? And what are retailers doing now? between now and April the 12th. They've got less than two weeks to do all the things you've said, try and get a new clientele as well as the old clientele in and, you know, try and uh, find ways of encouraging people uh, to start shopping again. But what are they doing now, between now and April the 12th? Retailers are working round the clock. I've been behind the scenes in a lot of stores trying to prepare opening up. They're aware that consumers are still going to be aware of safety measures. So a lot of it is safety first. That's always a primary concern for anyone wanting to go into a store. I think that retailers have to understand, therefore, can their operating hours move? Can they do more with QR codes and online as they have been doing to try and offer different options to consumers? In terms of what we need to do generally with retail, I think we've got to be very honest with um, the situation in terms of the high street's been changing for many years prior to COVID. COVID's exacerbated the situation in terms of the movement to online. And we've seen these, as I said, big brands making moves to close big stores. We've also seen Debenhams, right back to BHS, a lot of big department stores closing. We've also had 10 high street ministers in 10 years. And I think no matter where you stand politically, However good you might be, I don't believe that anyone's probably been able to give that role its all to be able to really focus in what has been a very changing area. You know, 10 years of change at probably one of the most important and crucial times. Consumers have very much taken the lead in terms of how they spend. They've very much embraced smart media. They know how to search for prices. They're very price competitive unless the heart wins over and they feel compelled to do something. So we actually know that as soon as people can get back out to the theatre and restaurants again, they'll be happy to do that because it's a social activity. Shops, it's a little bit different. And I think they're going to have to work even harder than those other industries to keep going. 
doing. So it's going to have to be about what's the latest trends, lots of great service and making sure that you are aware of all the support that's out there. But let's also hope that our government and local authorities really understand the importance of making this switch and making our high streets human rather than just pure retail. Yeah, quite something. Kate Hardcastle there, who uh, is a retail expert.